Welcome. I want to start by talking about database management and data management by first talking about a problem that is faced by organizations today. And that is the problem of the data deluge. The data deluge was a term coined in the early part of this decade and refers to the overwhelming flow of data and information. The article that we have to read for this week suggests that a lot of these this data is coming from the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things refers to devices that are present and are connected to the Internet that are generating digital traces or streams of data. The world of data infographic captures the fact that a variety of sources of data exist and some of these data sources are sources of data that are generated by the individual and some of these sources of data are data generated by devices. The data that is generated by these devices and by individuals has a couple of characteristics. This data is specialized. As they come from devices, they contain device specific information. As they are related to specific people, the data that is coming is local. And because individuals and devices generate several streams of data in a particular context, these data sources are interconnected. And so this data deluge results in specialized local and interconnected knowledge. The problem with the data deluge is not that we have too much data. It is how do we take this data and start analyzing it? In fact, the biggest problem with the data deluge is how do you winnow down this data? Now, typically, people have been how we have used to winnow down this data. Data analysts take a look at data, identify the relevant data to a problem for an organization, and uh, crunch the numbers, as they say. Now, we have to increasingly rely on algorithms and computational capacity to winnow down the data that has been generated by individuals and devices. The data deluge poses a variety of problems and challenges to organizations and individuals. The first is that of privacy. How do you protect the privacy of individuals and organizations? And what does it mean to protect privacy when maybe the infrastructure isn't yours or the data necessarily isn't yours or isn't within your organizational boundaries? How do you provide security to the individual and the organization about which the data is? Saving energy is one of the large uh, hidden problems uh, related to the data deluge. A lot of the devices on which this data is stored consume a lot of energy. Uh, a large part of the energy is spent in actually cooling down the locations uh, and the data centers that actually store the data. And the last and most important challenge is how do you extract value from this data? Organizations hang on to the data because they are told that data is valuable. How do you extract and identify the value that is actually present in this data is an ever-present challenge. And so we are faced with the problem of managing data in the face of this data deluge. We can start small by first talking about problems and examples of data that individuals might need to manage. Think of instances in your own life about data that you need to manage and the technologies that you might actually use to manage that data and the characteristics of these technologies. Some examples might be your phone book, your reminders, and we might use apps, we might use post-it notes, we might use notepads to actually manage these very small individual data management uh, problems. Now, the reason that we want to start by talking about individual data management is because it reflects some of the challenges that may be present in the organizational context. 
From an individual data management perspective, one must realize that internal memory, the capacity of our head, is limited. And so we can use our brains to remember small pieces of information. And while we are quickly able to retrieve that piece of information, and it is very convenient, we can't really store too much information in our brain. And so we have to supplement our internal memory with external memory. Our external memory in the form of applications, in the form of uh, post-it notes and notepads, extend our internal memory and so allows us to store a larger piece of information. But it is actually slower, it takes us time to access those apps or uh, those post-it notes and notepads and so it is not as convenient because it is slower. Organizations like people also need to remember many things and so organizations like us have to make trade-offs on how to store and manage their data. Organizational data are used and generated by a variety of different sorts of information systems. Here are some examples of what these information systems are. These systems range from transaction processing systems to decision support systems to BI and EIS information systems. Each of these systems generates and stores data for an organization. If you think about these systems in the context of an information system cycle, Databases and data warehouses, for instance, remember the past. They keep track of the history of the organization. Transaction processing systems handle the present, uh, the places where the organization interacts with uh, the external world, interacts with the customer. And systems such as uh, BI systems, decision support systems, help the organization prepare for the future. Now that we have some sense of what are the systems that store the data within the organization, we've got to think about what attributes would we like the, the data that is stored within these uh, information systems to have, because ultimately we would like the systems themselves to actually ha have these attributes. One of the most important attributes of data is that it should be shareable. I should be able to take data and share it with you in some way, shape or form. Data should be transportable. We should be able to move it from one location to another. We should also be able to secure the data. If we are unable to secure the data, we are breaching the trust of our customers and our potential rivals may have reason to compromise our systems. The data that we that we secure and share should be accurate. The data should be able to be moved from one location to another in a timely manner so that when we need the data, we have access to it. And finally, the data needs to be relevant to the problem that we are trying to solve. I do tend to like Dilbert and Dilbert cartoons. And this video is a good example of uh, some of the issues that managers might face. When we think of an organization's memory and the things that comprise an organization's memory, just like an individual's memory, there are several facets to this. People and conversations form an important part of an organization's memory. Think about the water cooler talk. Think about uh, the know-how that exists within the organization. People knowing how things get done. That refers to conversations and the tacit knowledge that individuals might have in the organization. That's an important part of an organizational memory and it ensures that the organization can function on a day-to-day -day basis. Tables and documents store a large part of an organization's memory. In the good old days, this data used to be stored in large file cabinets, but nowadays these are stored in knowledge management systems, these are stored in best practices uh, systems. There, there are a variety of different types of information systems that store data in the form of tables and documents. Video images, graphics, and multimedia are other forms of organizational memory and this can capture the richness that might be present uh, of organizational data. 
models are an important part of an organization's memory. Uh, in fact, think of financial firms, think of uh, banking institutions, uh, things such as uh, interest rate calculations, things such as uh, loan calculations and the like uh, rely on models and these models are often present in very uh, uh, in, in sometimes simple or complex forms. Models are subsequently an important part of an organization's memory because they provide value to an organization. Decisions or what has been done in the past are an important part of an organization's memory and it is important that an organization keep track of them. Sometimes tracking these decisions is important because it is required by uh, federal regulators or state regulators. Sometimes organizations might have specialized memories. Uh, take for example Kodak, the library of images is part of the specialized memory of Kodak. Uh, companies like Ralph Lauren, companies uh, that are involved in the fragrance business have specialized memories, specialized walls that store uh, that store uh, fragrance formulas and, 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 and different concoctions. And these are specialized memories that might be part of an organization. When one thinks of database systems that actually store this type of data, uh, these database systems have been around for a long, long time, starting from the original file systems in the early 1950s. Uh, database management systems have been evolving over time, uh, moving from file systems to hierarchical, spatial, relational systems, object-oriented systems, so on and so forth. Well, if we have been spending time on data management systems since the 1950s, why are we still talking about them 70 years on? Well, data management systems still have a lot of problems. One of the big problems with data management systems is redundancy. Data is redundant because organizations have a lot of data management systems. You saw that data management systems have evolved over time and some of these organizations have a lot of history and that data is stored across a lot of systems and there's a lot of redundancy in that data. Secondly, organizations don't really have control over that data. Uh, organizations like to store data uh, and then think about how to best store it. It is important, they realize the importance of capturing data, but not really the importance of uh, controlling and structuring that data before they capture it. Uh, interface issues or how to access this data is a perennial problem and organizations and information systems professionals are always looking at better ways to interface and access this data. Data management systems tend to be poorly integrated. Uh, most systems don't have easy ways to move data from one system to another and so lack of integration tends to also be an issue. And fun finally, these systems have a lack of reality or the data that they store sometimes does not match up with the reality that they are supposed to reflect or the complexity of an organization's data environment. So we see that we have this constant challenge that for an organization to do well, they have to work with data effectively uh, to be successful. The challenge is that they have to develop a skill set that helps them uh, explore and exploit the data that they have in their organizations. And so from the point of view of a data management professional, data management is a problem that uh, we're going to have for the foreseeable future. Uh, the landscape of data and data analytics and data management is constantly changing with the introduction of new types of data and new types of technologies to actually manage that data. And consequently, data management is going to be a problem for organizations now and in the future.